Hello and welcome to Mr. Kendall's Corner. My name is Eddie Kendall. As always, I'm proud to be the assistant superintendent for the Port Huron Area School District. And as always, we focus on the brightest and best uh, students and staff in the Port Huron Area School District. And today I'm fortunate to have with me today uh, Mrs. Jennifer Allen, Director of State and Federal Programs, and we're going to discuss some elements of our district's gifted and talented programs. And also, toward the end of the show, we'll talk to Mr. Jeff Willard, who is a intervention math specialist at Central Middle School. He'll bring some students in and we'll talk to them about being involved in the chess tournament and the chess club itself. So Jennifer, welcome Thank and I'm you. glad to have you here. Thank you. Well, Jennifer, I'm looking forward to uh, spreading some information about our gifted and talented okay. programs for our community. But can you give me some background on the history of the gifted and talented program in the Port Heron Area School District? Sure. So actually the programming dates back into the early 1970s. Mm -hmm. We had a really strong program ba back then and we were funded a lot of funding through the state of Michigan at that point for the gifted and talented program. So we have a long history of offering quality programming for our students. Fantastic. And you, you mentioned a little bit about the funding. Mm -hmm. So specifically, where does the funding come from uh, now for our current gifted and talented program? Okay. Well, as I mentioned early on, we received a lot of state funding. And over the years, the state cut back on that funding to the point where, at this point, we receive no state funding for it at all. And so the funding comes from our district's general fund. And we're also very fortunate to partner with our community, 21st century community mm -hmm. after school programs. And that's a federal grant funded program. And some of our gifted and talented programs are actually funded through that grant as well. Okay, I see. So what are the current gifted and talented programs mm -hmm. that are available to students? And when you finish describing that, give us a, maybe a, a roundabout figure or number of how many students participate in gifted and talented programs. Okay. Um, we have a wide variety of programming and one of, well I'll start at the elementary level. Um, one of our premier programs is our Rainbow Singers program and in that program alone we have 150 to 200 students that participate just in that one program. Wow. And in that program, that's one of the programs that um, is funded through the 21st Century Community Learning Centers grant and that happens in the fall and it's a choral focus mm -hmm. um, it's, and it ends in a fabulous concert for all the community and the parents at McMorrin each November. So that's one of our premier programs at the elementary level, fourth and fifth graders. Um, we also offer an after school enrichment program at all of our elementary schools and that's a 15 week program and what's unique about that program is each school based on the interests of the students and the talents of the staff get to design the focus that they want for that program. For example, we in the past have had a drumming program. Um, we've had forensic programs. We've had language programs. So really it's up to the staff member and the students to design something and that's 15, runs 15 weeks 15 throughout weeks. the school year, yes. So in essence, you not only focus on maybe some liberal arts or performing arts, mm -hmm. but some uh, academics as well. Definitely. Okay. Another program is the art volunteer program. That's also at the elementary level. At one time it was called Picture Lady. Mm -hmm. So if we have some people in the audience <laughs> that have heard of Picture Lady, we now call it Art Volunteer. We didn't want to discriminate against art gender. Volunteer. Art Volunteer. And that specifically focuses on art. Okay. And um, that is completely run by parent volunteers. We provide a training for any parent who would be interested. And they work with the actual art specialist in the building, in the school. And we have a variety of artists with prints and resources mm -hmm. that the parents share with the students. And that is really flexible. Um, it can go anywhere from kindergarten through fifth grade. So that's the art volunteer program. We also have, which many people are aware of, is our destination imagination program. And that's a K-12 program. We have that available at all three levels. And in fact, just um, last weekend, uh, we have six destina destination imagination teams in our district this year and they all competed in a regional competition Great. and they all qualified to go to state. So we're very proud of them. And Jennifer, we do have an outstanding history of mm -hmm. accomplishment in uh, destination imagination uh, within the Port Area School yeah. District. We do have some some past champions in our district. Definitely. We've had people actually compete at the global level in the past for NDI, we call it. Right. Um, so that's a very um, opportunity that goes K-12. 
In addition, we have um, a junior great books program that's actually focused at the elementary level that's focused on literature and enrichment for the students in the area of reading. We also have a summer enrichment program and that's offered for the elementary and middle school level. That is another one of our programs that we've partnered with the 21st Century Community Learning Center's grant program and they fund that and that happens each June um, for the weeks immediately, mm -hmm. as soon as school's out, it's housed at Holland Woods Middle School and it's opened up to elementary and middle school age students. Okay, so really there uh, are a lot of unique yeah. partnerships that go involved in helping support the gifted and talented programs at individual schools. Definitely, and one of them, speaking of a partnership, is at the middle school level. We have what's called Math Counts, and that is actually sponsored through the Michigan Association of Professional Engineers, and they host that at Central Middle School each year in February, and all of our middle school students have an opportunity to participate in that math, so it's another partnership with a community organization. Um, and that is an extremely tough, tough competition. <laughs> it, is, it is, it is. I've had a is. chance to uh, visit that competition in the past, and uh, it's an outstanding competition mm -hmm. for, for students and those engineers who provide uh, a very unique perspective in competitive math. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And another opportunity we have at middle school and high school only is the Quiz Bowl, which I'm sure a lot of families mm -hmm. are aware of the Quiz Bowl opportunity that we have through our gifted and talented programming as well. And the last one is the chess club, which we're really right. here to focus on a lot about the chess club today. And the chess club is open again, K-12, and it's run by parent volunteers sure. at the building level. And I know that Mr. Willard's going to be joining us a little bit later, and he donates, volunteers his time to put together this Saturday chess tournament. And all the chess players from across the district come to Port Huron High School. And Mr. Willard, along with students, he has a group of students that help them, uh, along with the Port Huron Chess Club from the right. community, again, other community partnership, that come in to help put together that tournament for the students um, on a Saturday. And it is amazing to be able to go in and see students from five years old to 12th grade all engaged in playing chess and sitting across from the table from each other and um, competing. And we really owe Mr. Willard a great deal yes. of... Uh, gratitude for his participating in his time on a volunteer basis mm -hmm. uh, with the chess club. Definitely. But one of the things, Jennifer, I want to make sure we highlight is how do parent or how do students and parents mm -hmm. alike uh, get involved with gifted and talented programs at their individual building? Okay. Well, first of all, all the information about our gifted and talented programs is included on our district mm -hmm. webpage. So parents at any time can look up the information as all the up-to-date dates and times of our events. Um, but specifically at the building level, I would encourage parents and students to contact their principal and check out their newsletters because we always have information and the building has specific information about what they have going on. And parents really are a crucial part. Sure. So much of Gifted and Talented is run by parent volunteers. That the art volunteer program, the chess club, these things are all supported by parents, junior great books. So they're really a key component. And I would encourage anyone who would like to volunteer, even if you're not a parent in the school and a community right. member, we would love to have community members helping um, our students explore these different areas of interest in our schools. And the, one of the greatest aspects of this is that you have parents and community partnerships, mm -hmm. teachers, students involved collectively to really shape uh, and enhance the overall academic experience of a student in our district. Yes, exactly. So we really appreciate you taking the time uh, to visit with us. Keep up the good work well, and, and your you. job for the district with the gifted and talented program. And we'll be right back with Mr. Jeff Willard. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank for you. Coming on the show. Welcome back to Mr. Kendall's Corner. At this point in the show, we're going to talk about a fantastic extracurricular activity that we have in our district. Uh, we have three fantastic gentlemen sitting to my right, uh, math intervention specialist from Central Middle School, Mr. Jeff Willard, so welcome, Mr. Willard. Also to my, my right uh, and sitting next to Mr. Willard is eighth grade student, Jimmy Kennedy. Welcome, Jimmy, to the show, and also Jacob Kosick. Guys, thanks for taking the time to come to the show to talk about chess. I'm excited to talk about chess. I think it's a fantastic game. 
But anyway, starting with you, Mr. Willard, uh, how many years have you been playing chess, and where did, you, where did your interest in chess come from? Uh, I've been playing chess personally for about 40 years, and um, my dad got me started on it. As a matter of fact, that was when my fifth birthday was coming up, that was what I wanted for my birthday was to learn how to play chess. Well, and chess is an outstanding game, yep. uh, specifically about awareness and planning and preparation. Yep. So with our two students, uh, how old were you guys when you learned how to play chess? Um, Starting with you, Jimmy. I was eight years old. My parents taught me, and it's really fun to do. It's really fun to do. Jacob? I was 11 years old, so I started kind of late, but I kind of got the game quickly. Are you picking up your game and skills? Can, can you can you face uh, oh, Jimmy Kennedy? Yeah. Okay, yes. fantastic. And you guys have a fantastic teacher uh, to help you guys out with that. But, Mr. Willard, uh, speaking with you, please tell us a little bit about the history of the Port Huron Area School District uh, Chess Tournament. Sure. Uh, uh, Lon Rakowski was an administrator in the district, and I think it was 1996 when he okay. got this started. Um, he through some funding, got some boards into the schools for students to use, and um, got it off to a great start then, and he did that for about five years. Very good. So with our two students, uh, Jacob, what do you like most about chess? Oh, well, whenever you lose, you learn something new, and you change your game to make it better. So you always change your game plan. And there's a lot of thought process that goes into a loss oh, yeah, to prepare yeah. you for an upcoming victory as well. Jimmy, what do you think about that? I think that's true. And personally, my favorite part of it is the great rivalries we have. Okay. Because it's always going back and forth. Very good. That's interesting. And it is a great uh, rivalry uh, activity. Uh, Mr. Willard, what's your favorite part about the chess tournament? Definitely watching the kids play. Um, when I when I took over the tournament, um, I had no experience running a tournament at all. Whereas Lon Rakowski had, he's kind of an expert at it. So that was the the scary part of it. Sure. Once we got that down, the the best part is when there's a pause in my running around and I get to watch these guys sure. show their stuff. Right. And how many kids participate in the chess tournament? It varies a little bit. I think we always have over 100. Um, wow. We have had about 150 before. 150 kids. And are they dispersed by grade level? Yeah, yeah. We have everything from kindergarten through 12th grade. And, um, yeah, we usually have representatives of each grade level. Okay. Very good. And, Jimmy, what's your, your uh, favorite part about the tournament itself? Um, I think the best part about the tournament is facing people that you would never have the opportunity to face. Coming from other schools, you would never see them. So. Okay. And, Jacob, do you start the game with a handshake? Well, <laughs> we just usually start it, but if we can't decide what color we want to be, we do that hand thing behind our back. Okay, <laughs> maybe a little rock, paper, paper scissors. Hand. Okay. That's fantastic. Uh, Mr. Willard, what do you want students to learn uh, while participating in the game of chess and the tournament itself? Well, the, the game of chess strategy is part of it, so the, you're, there's always the critical thinking going on. Um, it's interesting you said the handshake because one of the things we do is end every game with a handshake sure. and you say good game. So the, the being good sports is a big right. part of it too. Very good. Guys, how do you prepare for a chess tournament? Jacob, starting with you. We just usually play a lot of chess and just refine our skills and all that stuff. I mean, personally, I try to go against my parents a few times the night before so that I just in that mood where I'm thinking about chess, and it usually helps. So who's the top chess player in the family? M me and my dad's catch it, trying to catch up to me right now, I think. That's a dangerous statement, knowing that mom <laughs> probably cooks all your meals and packs lunch for you. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, Mr. Willard, what, what's your most memorable chess moment? Um, you know, I started, I played in tournaments 
when I was these guys' age, even younger. And I, I played for a lot of years before I ever won anything. So it was a big deal when I sure. finally got to take home one of those trophies. So one that of was those probably trophies. It. And is that what you guys uh, play for too? Not just the fun of the game, but maybe to be a chess champion? Definitely, I think mm -hmm. so. Okay. Uh, specifically about the upcoming chess tournament that you guys will participate in, uh, what strategies, it, it, we don't want to give away too many strategies, but what, what type of strategies or skills are you thinking about using to start the tournament, Jimmy? Um, I tend to like to use my knight in the beginning because it's always confusing for the opponents to try to block and they never know where I'm going to go. So. Well said. Well, well thought out. And Jacob, any I strategy you want to share? Well, I usually start off with my queen to get a bunch of big casualties on the <laughs> other side. Okay. And then I just go along from there. So you want to eliminate some people right off the start. Well, that, that is uh, extremely awesome. Now, I understand you guys are involved in mentoring other chess students, specifically elementary students at Indian Woods Elementary. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, what we do is we just we started a chess club a couple of years ago. We'd always wanted there to be a chess club at that school. So, And then the deal was we would help out the kids, and we love doing it. It's fun. I know a lot more people now because of it. And it's just, it's a good time all around. Very good. Jacob, you having fun with that too? Yeah, it's really fun. And uh, the best part is that when they make a mistake and you correct it, they don't make that mistake again. That's fantastic. I appreciate, appreciate you guys doing that for, for students in our district as well. Thank you. Well, Mr. Willard, the last question for you is, is, is there any connection to academic success in the game of chess that you maybe see that you can... Uh, uh, communicate to students? Well, chess is definitely a thinking person's game. So um, it's hard to know whether these guys are smart kids who happen to play chess or whether chess has helped make them smart kids. I kind of sure. think it does. Um, but it's definitely, it's a great game. Very good. And what do students need to do to be involved in chess at Central Middle School? Oh, they, they just have to show up. We have a, sure. we have a weekly meeting and come in and if they don't know how to play, we teach them right away. And if they know how to play, they get right at it and shoot for that top spot. Very good. Well, I certainly appreciate the time you spend with students teaching them uh, such a thought-provoking game such as chess. And, guys, thanks for taking the time to come on the show. And good luck in any upcoming tournament. And remember, the Port Heron Area School District is a dynamic teaching and learning community shaping students to be responsible global citizens. Thanks a lot for Thank coming you. out, guys. Thanks for that.